You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. I just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, buy, buy, buy. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year, and I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it there to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any punches. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, this is Jesse. How y'all doing out there today? All right, I'm going to say something, and those of you in the military will know exactly what I'm saying. And no, I'm, you're not going to hear a bunch of show prep. This show was put together on the fly. I had a whole other show prepped, but this takes priority. Gas! 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 Now, if you were in an active duty military scenario, what would that mean? That would mean it is time to grab your gas mask pull it on, and start throwing on your protective gear. Unfortunately, the civilians in Syria have no protective gear. And their enemy is none other than their government. This is hideous, folks. Hideous. And I can't stress this enough. And I can, I can deal with a lot of things. I can put up with a lot. I can put up with the laryngitis. I can put up with a rough show. I can put up with sending my own husband. First one or current. Off to war. But I can't put up, I can't stay silent, no matter how sore my throat is, about Assad gassing his own people. I don't even know where to begin to put up with it. I really don't. I don't think anyone should have to put up with it, least of all the Syrian, the innocent Syrian people. The victims, if you've looked at all at this, were women and children. They were not. They were not combatants. They were innocent civilian women and children. And I'm sorry. That can't go unpunished. Not in any way, shape, or form. In my, in your host's mind, the chemical weapons attacks by a government on their own people are the very definition of crimes against humanity. Yes, I said it. Crimes against humanity. What do I want? I want Assad hauled out of Syria and drug before the International Criminal Court on charges of crimes against humanity. That's 
That's what I want to see. Will it happen? I don't know. I have no way of knowing. All I know is that something has to ha happen. These horrific attacks cannot go unchallenged. And for the sake of the innocent, men, women, and children, something needs to change. And no, I'm not trying to be dramatic, folks. I got enough drama in my life. I do not need to chase drama. All I can tell you is that this man is the epitome of evil. And no, he's just not crazy. That would be Quackers up the lunatic in the north, who also isn't very nice to his people. Now, let's play connect the dots here, folks. Who is supporting Bashar al-Assad? Russia. Who's friends with Russia and in fact letting them use their military bases? Again, Iran. Who trades missile technology with Iran? North Korea. How small does that make this world? What is North Korea currently working on? An intercontinental ballistic missile. That's why I see a North Korea story, I look for an Iranian story. I see a North Korean launch, I want to know what Iran's doing with missile technology. This may or may not make a lot of sense to you folks. But... But, this is absolutely abhorrent. Now, I hope Mr. I don't often speak out on U.S. politics, but I'm making an exception. I am making an exception on this one. Because this also involves Iran. All right? The Boeing company announced a tentative agreement on Tuesday to sell up to 60 737s to an Iranian airline. A transaction valued at $6 billion. Oh, yeah. Boeing is a leading commercial aerospace company and top American exporter. Now, the government, the agreement does what govern the require the agreement of the United States government. The only positive it would create about eighteen thousand American jobs. However. I don't know that I want 18,000 jobs because we are giving or selling aircraft to Iran. I really don't know. So this is absolutely hideous. Makes me not want to support Boeing, but I don't know how not to support an airline manufacturer because when you fly a com on a commercial flight, you don't necessarily get to choose what aircraft you fly on. You have some control. But if you have to get from A to B and it's a Boeing plane and it's an emergency, you have to get on that plane. Now, There is a lot going on in this world. And I can only cover 
a small fraction of it, even on this show. And I happen to know that the mainstream media, or as we often refer to them, the lame stream media, covers even less. I'm just going to skim just a few, just a few of the headlines. Okay? All right, you ready? North Korea fires ballistic missile into sea of Japan. No kidding. They don't like the fact that we're meeting with China. Why would they like the fact? Mr. Art of the Deal may actually get, make something happen. Would I like to see North Korea stop lobbing missiles? Yes, because I don't want to have to deal with the lunatic in the North who's just playing crackers. <laughs> I just don't want to have to deal with this man. And I don't want our children or their children or anyone to have to deal with a man that is so deranged as to put money into missile technology and nuclear weapons instead of feeding his own people. In my mind, that is also a crime against humanity. And I'm sorry, this show is turning into more of a rant than I usually do. Oh, yeah. So, and I apologize. Now, Trump presses China on North Korea. Some people are calling this a bluff. I don't think it is. U.S. President Donald Trump has vowed to deliver an ultimatum to Chinese leader Xi Jinping to reign in North Korea. Will he? I don't know. That's one of the headlines today. I hope he does. You've heard the audio on this show. If you're a regular listener, you know North Korea is an insidious power. Iran is an insidious power. I'm sorry, in my mind right now, Syria, Iran, North Korea, all being propped up and played with by Russia. Oh yeah, Russia does stuff too, too with North Korea. Why do you think those military uniforms look so Cold War era? Why? You've never seen one? Go look it up. Go look it up. I'm sorry, but there is absolutely no reason that These people who blame us for Kim Jong-nam's death. You remember that one? The, f the from A to Z, this case is the product of reckless moves of the United States and South Korean Authority aimed to meet the dangerous political the purpose uh, to tarnish the image of the dignified GPRK and to bring down the social system in it. Yeah, we do want to bring down your social system because your social system only protect, protects Kim Jong-un and his pampered Pyongyang pooches. The rest of your country is starving to death, but we didn't kill Kim Jong-nam. He might have actually done some good in the country. If anybody had a reason to kill Kim, take out Kim Jong-nam, it was North Korea. He was viewed as a, Kim Jong-nam is viewed as a moderate, potential 
successor to Kim Jong Il. Kim Jong Un. Now, this isn't the only place people are being slaughtered. I wish I could say Syria is the place people are being slaughtered, period, or North Korea, or even just stop at the two of them. There is alleged ethnic cleansing going on in Myanmar's Muslim minority. Yet the government says ethnic cleansing is too strong an expression for what is happening. Really? Really? Muslims killing Muslims. One group of Muslims who doesn't like the minority group is take kill, killing them. Wholesale slaughter. Now about 75,000 of them have escaped to Bangladesh. But, I don't think they're going to be safe anywhere. And the UN Human Rights Council has agreed to investigate these allegations against the Myanmar's own army. Yes, again, another case of governments trying to take out civilian population. I have no idea what is with these people. I really don't. I can't even begin to comprehend it. Not even a little. And quite frankly, I've given up trying. These governments kill and maim and murder their own people. Wasn't that what we went all the way to Baghdad and took out Saddam Hussein for? He gassed the Kurds. And we had proof of that one. Now, I'm doing a little quick Google search. And I'm sorry. These are crimes against humanity. And there is no other way to put it. Let me do get to a news story and see if I can calm down just a hair. Because I am, ab oh, it is the bottom of the hour. I just now noticed the time, folks, and I do have to stay on track tonight. Because there is, well, actually, there is no one hot on my heels. Last week was the last episode of Constitution and Culture, so I may have to run over just a little bit. But we are going to take a commercial break. And I will see you on the other side. I'm going to keep going until I cover the topic or my voice fails me tonight. Or America Off the Rails comes on. And I apologize for being on such an insidious tear. But I have absolutely had it. And just as a reminder, you can always catch me on Jesse's POV on Twitter. And yes, I stay logged in while I'm doing the show. So that if you want to send a message to me, you can. Some nights I'm in the KLRN radio chat room. Depends on if I remember to log in. If you're over there, I will be checking in shortly. But this is absolutely garbage. Absolute garbage. All right. All right. I can't put up with these idiots. All right. I will see you on the other side.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. Hi, just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Sons of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, buy, buy, buy. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year, and I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. 687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This 
this is Jesse. Thank you for hanging in there with me over that commercial break. I have managed to get my blood pressure a little bit further down, a little bit more under control. But like, unlike most shows where I will switch gears after the commercial break, I have a couple of other stories I want to touch on. But I'm sorry, this massacre in Syria, yes, it's the latest. Do you remember all the bombings in Aleppo, the barrel bombs, the chlorine gas? Well, they've upped the ante. Idlib is where the people of Aleppo were evacuated to. And now the Syrian government is pulling the same crap in Idlib it pulled in Aleppo. Now, I do have to give Ambassador Nikki Haley and a few others at the U.S. administration props. Let's take a listen to what she said on the floor floor of the U.N. Security Council. Assad has no incentive to stop using chemical weapons as long as Russia continues to protect his regime from consequences. I implore my colleagues to take a hard look at their words in this council. We regularly repeat tired talking points in support of a peace process that is regularly undermined by the Assad regime. Time and time again, Russia uses the same false narrative to deflect attention from their, a- from their allies in Damascus. Time and time again, without any factual basis, Russia attempts to place blame on others. There is an obvious truth here that must be spoken. The truth is, that Assad, Russia, and Iran have no interest in peace. All right, I'm going to stop it right there for just a minute. Ambassador Haley, thank you. Sure, words have never been spoken. And I doubt the UN Security Council has had this kind of truth spoken to power in many, many long years year. This whole thing has me absolutely teed off. And I know regular listeners of this show are like, well, what else are you going to cover tonight? I don't know if I'm going to get anything else. And I apologize because I usually cover quite a bit. So if this is your first time listening to the show, this is not a normal show. I normally cover quite a bit of news. But. But. I just can't do much else today. Now, I agree with this article I tripped over. Congress, of course, is doing their usual. They can't get their act together, folks. And that's about as much as I'm going to say on U.S. politics. But Ambassador Haley. Thank you for at least having the courage to speak truth. Let's let her finish her remarks. The illegitimate Syrian government led by a man with no conscience, has committed untold atrocities against his people for more than six years. Assad has made it clear that he doesn't want to take part in a meaningful political process. Iran has reinforced Assad's military, and Russia has shielded Assad from UN sanctions. If Russia has the influence in Syria that it claims to have, we need to see them use it. We need to see them put an end to these horrific acts. How many more children have to die before Russia cares? All right. And your host thinks that this is what Assad is doing right now. (laughs) (laughs) While having, having a relaxing evening, enjoying his evening in Damascus thinking he got away with it. 
Well, Nikki Haley, Ambassador Haley, wasn't the only one. Here's what Secretary of State Tillerson said, and it's just a very brief clip. It was at a photo spray when he was greeting the leader, a, rep, a representative from Mexico. I didn't catch what leader he was greeting, but it was a, a representative, either the president or somebody from Mexico. Here's the brief clip statement he came out with. Well, there's no doubt in our mind that the Syrian regime of the leadership of Bashar al-Assad is responsible for this horrific attack. And uh, we think it's time for the Russians to really need to think carefully about their continued support of the Assad regime. Yes. Now, that was the only statement he made, which made it that much more powerful. Then, I have today, and I don't play many Donald Trump clips on this show. Let's take a listen. Before we begin, let me say a few words about recent events. Yesterday, chemical attack, a chemical attack that was so horrific in Syria against innocent people, including women, small children, and even beautiful little babies. Their deaths was an affront to humanity. These heinous actions by the Assad regime cannot be tolerated. The United States stands with our allies across the globe to condemn this horrific attack and all other horrific attacks. I don't play many Trump clips, but that one was so strong and so relevant. Now, I say to President Trump, what are you going to do about it? Words are great. Condemnations are outstanding. It's a great first step. What's step number two, three, four, and five? I don't want to see you draw some red line in the sand that goes absolutely nowhere like your predecessor. I want to see you take action. You are a businessman and a man of action. You don't, when North Korea started launching more missiles after you were sworn into office, the deployment of THAAD was sped up dramatically. There were planes unloading the system, or parts of it, on the ground within a week. Now, what are you going to do about Syria, Mr. President? Yes, President Trump. I don't. I highly doubt you listen to my small show, but I'm going to ask you, what are you going to do? There have been hundreds of world condemnations around the world about Bashar al-Assad. Yet, he goes, oh, wasn't us, it was the rebels. Or, oh, wasn't us. Here's one article I found. Hang on, I'm looking for it. And if Assad isn't punished, the rest of the world will be in danger. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it goes. More than 80 people, including 30 children, 20 women, were killed in a chemical attack in the Syrian town near Idlib. And 22 of them were from one family. The attacks used to be chlorine. There was a Doctors Without Borders medical team, and they are apolitical folks. They examined a number of victims in in a hospital, probably a makeshift hospital, knowing them, near the border with Turkey. And they said the symptoms were consistent with exposure to a neurotoxin, at least two different chemical agents. They're saying chlorine and sarin.
Witnesses say that four rockets hit the ground around 6.30 in the morning on Tuesday, smashing a crater into the ground but causing minimal structural damage. People real quickly realized this was not a conventional attack. Yes. People were asleep in their beds or just getting up. Well, just think about it. What are you doing at 6.30 in the morning? You're not prepared for gas, gas, gas. You don't walk around with a gas mask on your hip. Now, Trump has yet to say how he'd respond to this attack. But it's one of those things that I'd like to see him do it. It's time to respond. It's time for action. And you've got one of America's best partners with you right now, King Abdullah of Jordan. That man has led his country's special forces. That man will do anything. For those of you who don't remember, didn't know, or don't recall, when one of his pilots was burned alive, King Abdullah, who used to be an aircraft pilot, wanted to be fly one of the bombing runs. Yes, he actually wanted to get in a plane and go drop bombs on Dash himself. That horrific incident struck him to the core. Meanwhile, diplomats at the UN spar whether to hold Bashar al-Assad's government responsible for the chemical weapons attack. Even Israel believes Syria was behind the chemical weapons attack. Now, just to tell you, it could be worse. I've got an old audio clip, although this one isn't that outdated, that I want to play for you real quick. And I'm pulling it up right now. It just takes me a minute. Because when I don't have them all preloaded, it does take a little bit longer for me to find them, get them cued, and get them out to you. The reason I look from North Korea to Syria and Iran is this clip, or one of the reasons. Ten years ago, the North Koreans transferred a plutonium production reactor to Syria. It was crushed by the Israelis. If it had not been crushed, that reactor could be providing plutonium not only to Syrians, but to others who have traped through Syria, and these are pretty unsavory folks. And that's an image that goes to nuclear terrorism we don't like to contemplate. So we need to somehow impress upon the North Koreans that's not a move we want to see again. Yes. North Korea gave Syria, or sold probably, Syria a nuclear reactor that and if you've ever if you have not listened to the episode of Conversations in Science about nuclear reactors Dr. Judy L. Moore does an outstanding job of explaining the process of these reactors. You put in uranium, which can be used to make a bomb, but you get out plutonium. And it takes much less plutonium to get the same boom as it takes uranium. Plutonium is the better weapon for a nuclear bomb. And that's what that reactor would have done. Now, 
I don't want us to go this go go this alone. I'm not calling for unilateral action. The UN is probably going to pussyfoot around. What about NATO? Turkey is a member of NATO. If one of these gas attacks leaks over into their borders, I'm going to say some words I don't normally say. Use Article 5 of NATO, Turkey. Get everybody out there. Get the boots on the ground. And yes, Article 5 of NATO has only been invoked once. Now, I've, I've, I've only seen news reports of sarin and chlorine gas. However, one of my Twitter followers, and this tells you I do pay attention to my Twitter feed while I'm on air, has said that Assad bought mustard gas from Saddam Hussein's factories in Iraq years ago. And that there were blisters in some of the videos, which is a sign of mustard gas. I'm going to ask any of you out there, I'm going to ask any of you out there who have the article or have a link to something that points to this, not the signs of mustard gas. I got that from the from the National Institute of Health, but about Assad buying the mustard gas, which I completely believe. But if you've got a news article, even if it's an old one, tag it, tag it to me on Twitter, at Jesse's POV. So, but like I said, I'm grateful that our Israel took out that nuclear reactor years ago, or God knows what other horrors Assad could be doing to both his people, our troops in the region, and our NATO allies. I mean, Idlib hospitals were overwhelmed. It's all been absolutely horrific. This attack is nothing short of a crime against humanity. And Major Payne, I am watching your tweets and as you tag me in them. I'm only watching notifications, but I am watching. Thank you. And he said he'll get me the article tomorrow, for tomorrow. I'll, I'll read it on the air tomorrow. I'll follow up on Assad buying Hussein's chemical weapons tomorrow. Because while Saddam Hussein may not have had chemical weapons by the time we got there, trust me, he had them. How else could he have gassed his own people? All right, I don't usually rant like this. You know that. But times like this just absolutely tee me off. Now, I'm flipping through the news articles I've got, Major Payne, and none of the still photos show blisters. But I gotta say, I gotta say, the Idlib chemical weapons attack, what, what uh, the pro-Assad websites are saying, that they attacked a weapons warehouse that must have had the chemical weapons in it. Horse hockey, as Colonel Potter from MASH would have said. That is just absolute horse hockey, because I don't curse on my show. So I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, really? Then they also claim that the corpses were not really victims of sarin gas, but of Al Nusra kidnapping victims from the from nearby towns. 
and you guys think North Korea's got the only propaganda machine in the in the world? Nope, Syria's got one too. So does Iran, for that matter. North Korea just has it down to a freaking science. Like I said, North Korea, Iran, Syria, and Russia, they're all in bed together. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know how I can be clearer. Again, let's connect the dots. Bashar al-Assad, as Nikki Haley put it, illegitimate government in Syria, is propped up by who? Russia. Who is Russia friends with? Iran. I, Iran has let Russia in the past and probably is still and will continue to let them use their military bases. Who does Iran trade weapons techno missile technology with? North Korea. And you wonder why North Korea developing an ICBM terrifies me? It's not just for the fact that he might actually be able to hit another continent or strike mainland. What if Iran or Syria gets their hands on, IC on nuclear-tipped ICBMs? And yeah, I'm going out there on the what-if spectrum. But it is a distinct possibility with these two being that close friends. And for the record, Assad is a Sunni Muslim. Saddam Hussein was also Sunni. Peas in a pod, folks. Peas in a pod. <laughs> and I think that's probably what they were both spending a lot of time doing. All right, folks, my throat is giving out. My laryngitis is not completely gone. You know, I love you. I'm listening. I, I know you're out there. And Major Payne, thank you for tuning in tonight. Maybe I'll even get you on the air one night as a guest. And for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, he's one of my faithful Twitter followers on Twitter at Piano Struck. His name is Major Payne, and he is a United States Air Force Major, retired. He used to fly AWACS, and he is definitely a Leo first respond responder supporter. And I would like to definitely get him on the air. So any of my other followers out there? Any of my other followers out there? Uh, send him a note of encouragement. Maybe I'll get the bigwigs from the station on him. All right, folks. You, you regular listeners, you know what's coming. And yeah, I'm going to try it tonight. I'm going to try it. 